Previously, Brendan, Patrick, and the Summit Climb team make it from Chinese Base Camp to Camp 3, staging themselves for their summit night. Welcome back to Everest for Mountaineers. Let's figure it out last minute. Yep. Order of operations here goes goggles, headlamp, mask. How you feeling? Feeling good? Yeah. Woo! Oh, there we go. What's there? Nervous at all? Huh? Nervous at all? Or excited or what? I'm totally pumped. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That is why I climb with Patrick. The positive attitude. I was nervous, but with that answer, I had to shrug it off and think positive. So we keep track. Brendan looks like this, Patrick looks like that. At 11 p.m., in full summit regalia, we awkwardly clambered out of the tent. The night was still. Hey, you, you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm almost ready to go. David looks about ready to go. You're about ready to go. Gelje's oxygen was leaking, but once he fixed it, we began the steep ascent for the summit. The exit cracks, as they're called, lead you from Camp 3 through, over, and around cliffs. It was proving more difficult and required more scrambling than I had imagined. Patrick and Gelje were right in front of me the entire time. Gelje was setting a relatively blazing pace. Patrick was right behind him. Once we hit the northeast ridge, the wind picked up and the temperature plummeted. We made it to the northeast ridge. Just a few up there. Moving your Jumar and safety carabiner from one fixed rope to the next was exhausting. We had been on the move now for about three hours. The cold, wind, and lack of oxygen were taking their toll. Northeast ridge. Patrick's crampons were kicking out orange sparks as he was failing to gain purchase on the limestone face. Gelje's headlamp further up was my only indication of how steep this cliff actually was. <laughs> this is the beginning of the second step. None of our headlamps revealed what I was hoping to see, the ladders. They are the telltale sign that we had made it to the second step. You've got to be kidding me, I thought. I realized we had only reached the first step, one of a series of three cliffs above 8,500 meters that you must surmount to reach the summit of Mount Everest. Despite my delusion, I managed to follow Gelje and Patrick to the famed second step. I finally saw the ladders and this time knew for certain where we were. At 8,610 meters, the second step is known as the crux of the Northeast Ridge Route. It is a 40 meter cliff on a ledge with a 3,000 vertical meter drop down the east face of Everest. I focused to stay calm as my metal crampons slipped on the aluminum rungs. An hour later, on the third step, I found Patrick and Gelje catching their own breaths. In front of us, a summit pyramid was fading into view. I glanced back over my shoulder to look down the third step. The view was stunning. Below the blackness of space, silhouetting the black fins of nearby peaks, the curve of the earth was outlined by a thin strip of bright orange and yellow light. With the breath of a new day, we headed for the summit. Although every step was a challenge, the rising sun warmed our bodies and spirits. Across the summit pyramid, the path dips below a false summit and exits onto the top of the extremely exposed Kangsheng face, where we could see the shadow of Everest on the earth. The footholds here are barely the width of your boot. This steep rock ramp brought us to another false peak, the summit ridge, and the first view of the prayer flags indicating the true summit. At approximately 8 a.m., 
Patrick McKnight, Gel J. Sherpa, and I summited the highest mountain in the world. Olivia, you and I made it. Yeah. About as large as a kitchen table, we had the summit to ourselves for two minutes before the climbers behind us joined in. Oh yeah. All right. Nothing more to say. Ready to get my flags out. Patrick's oxygen mask wasn't working too well, and his thinking was a little slow. The wind howled, further chilling the negative 40 degree temperature, and our flags were not cooperating. The world changing speeches we prepared turned into a rushed, jumbled mess as we tried to stay warm. We said what we could. I did manage to get some blurry video of my brothers and my girlfriend on the summit. We took one last minute to enjoy where we were, looking down into Nepal, looking down into Tibet. For a brief moment, our far off vision was realized. But dwelling on our accomplishment was not an option. We needed to start our descent. Uh. After two days, we <laughs> made it back to Advanced Base Camp. It actually took us all of the summit day to get down to Camp 1. We wanted to come down to ABC, but we just could not move. Um, then the next day, <laughs> early in the morning, came down the North Call. Spent the, uh, yesterday resting here at ABC. Uh, meanwhile, the other groups got some serious, serious things going on up at uh, above camp three and the steps. On Patrick's blog, Climbing on Purpose, he gives a detailed account of the extremely dangerous and preventable summit fiasco that one of our teammates initiated. For mountaineers, especially inexperienced ones, there are some take home lessons in the blog that could save your life and the lives of others. In brief, out of our team, Heike decided to leave the climb after the first attempt on the North Call. Magnus, decided to turn around as he was exhausted after reaching the third step. Dom was having oxygen mass problems and also decided to turn around. These three men made incredibly difficult but correct decisions and are alive today to tell the tales. After Patrick and I summited and were on our way down, Grant, John, Martin, Franz, Jongbu, and David also summited. My last advice. If you undertake an Everest climb, make sure you are in the best shape of your life and believe it. Make sure you are self-reliant and have enough energy to make it down from the summit. As the saying goes, climbing up is optional. Climbing down is mandatory. Finally, enjoy every moment. It is an unparalleled experience that will be with you for the rest of your life. Good morning, campus! Hey, hey, hey. How are you all?